I've heard of objects moving, screams, footsteps, loud moans. The students have been talking about this for years and years. How far back, we don't know. On this entire top floor, spread these around. Just remember where you put them. Pete Kruger with the International Paranormal Reporting Group leads this investigation. Infrared cameras, audio recorders, EMF readers, all equipment used by the IPRG to document paranormal activity. Dinah, if you're with us, would you be willing to share your story with us? Dinah is said to be the communication building's resident ghost. Every culture in the world has ghost stories. Every culture in the world has some belief of some kind of afterlife. We've never documented anything that would prove that um, whatever is occurring there is harmful. Marie Cuff, executive director of the IPRG, says the story of Dinah dates back many years. Back around the 1950s, when they had a dance, a young lady was supposed to attend with her boyfriend, and he canceled on her. She went ahead and decided to go to the dance by herself, and when she showed up, he was there with someone else, and it broke her heart. She ran out of the room and into one of the back stairwells, where she cried, and then she went into one of the bathrooms and hung herself. <laughs> Did you just hear that? Although the story of Dinah may be unconfirmed, Marie does know why people call the alleged ghost Dinah. Marie says a teacher was working late one evening when... There was some writing that appeared on one of the chalkboards. He finally said, if there's somebody here, who are you? What is your name? Nothing. So he asks again, and on one of the pianos, the old song, Dinah Won't You Blow, began to play. <laughs> And so he named her Dinah. Marie says the key to investigating the paranormal is having an open mind. And for Marie, that means looking for a logical explanation for any reported supernatural activity. And her team may have found one. Oh, wow. High levels of electromagnetic fields. People that might be sensitive to electromagnetic fields, there's a whole list of uh, symptoms. Feeling of people watching them, you know, of uh, uh, crawly skin, paranoia, nausea. headaches, nausea. Marie says that high EMF levels could explain some of what students claim to experience here, but not all. They get a little creeped out, but they're also there late at night by themselves quite often. So some of that could just be being there by yourself late at night in a dark building. The cause for the hauntings there or the paranormal activity there is kind of unknown because even through all the research, there's no proof that a young woman actually hung herself there. So what really is causing it is kind of unknown. This is an academic institution. That's what they do, all these little buildings around us, is they look for answers for problems. This one doesn't have an answer.